in Massachusetts, the opioid epidemic is devastating, but we are fighting back with everything we can. We're picking up every possible tool and trying to figure out how we can both reduce the number of people who are addicted or become addicted and how to deal with those who have addictions. So one of the things we've been focused on is figuring out how to limit the number of pills left sitting in patients' medicine cabinets. From 2000 to 2015, the number of opioid prescriptions in Massachusetts increased by roughly 175%. It is a particular problem because, as you know, of the people who abuse prescription opioids, almost 80% of them uh, started with pills that were prescribed legally to someone, themselves, friends, relatives. So to reduce the number of pills in circulation, Senator Capito and I introduced a bill called Reintroduced, uh, Reducing Unused Medications Act, which allows the partial filling of opioid prescriptions. That means patients are able to have a pharmacist fill only a few days' worth of their opioid prescription, and then they can return for more if they still feel the need. If they don't, mm -hmm. those pills never make it into anyone's medicine cabinet. Now, that bill was signed into law in 2016. Dr. Gottlieb, when you formed your opioid steering committee at the FDA, I sent you a letter about the partial fill legislation that Senator Capito and I managed to get passed last year, and I want to thank you for your response on that. Let me just ask you, so we can get it on the record, do you think partial fill of opioid prescriptions is one way to cut down on the number of opioids in circulation? I do, Senator. I've been on the record supporting um, various measures that we can um, try to uh, rationalize dispensing. And so anything that we can do in that regard that, that makes sense, that can be implemented without, um, without untoward side effects, uh, un unintended consequences, I would support. Good, good. And now that we have this new tool available to us to help tackle the opioid epidemic, we realize that uh, for it to work, a lot of people need to know about it. And that means a lot of doctors need to know about it, a lot of pharmacists need to know about it, a lot of patients need to know about it. So I wanted to ask you, Dr. McCants Katz, you are the person in charge over at SAMHSA, and I want to ask whether or not SAMHSA has a role to play in engaging everyone on this issue so that patients actually can do partial fills and not end up with a medicine cabinet full of opioids that they don't need. Absolutely, SAMHSA does have uh, a role to play. Um, we, do, um, we do outreach and uh, training and work with both uh, providers and with communities. So uh, in terms of, uh, I would see this as something that would fall under the purview of some of our prevention activities, and this is definitely something that, that SAMHSA could play a role in. Good. Uh, also, we will continue to work with CDC because they have uh, a very large role to play in this as well. Good, good. Um, and that's what we all want to do. Senator Capito and I worked on this legislation so that patients would have the power to reduce the number of pills they take home. Uh, and we just keep looking for places where we can reduce the number of opioids in circulation. Recently, Senator Capito and I sent letters to governors across the country and to a number of national medical associations to try to continue this conversation around the implementation of the partial fill bill and their efforts to try to reduce the number of pills in circulation. We're making progress but not enough has been done yet. And so I look forward to working with all of you on this as we go forward. Again, thanks from everyone on this committee, thanks from the people across America for your coming today and bringing us up to date on your efforts, for the work that you already have done and for the work you will do in the future. We really need you out there fighting. And with that, Today's hearing is the first in a series of hearings this committee intends to hold on the opioid crisis. We plan to hold a second hearing next month looking at the situation on the ground in the states. We will hear state and local perspectives on the challenges they face and the successes they've had in combating this crisis. 
The hearing record will remain open for 10 days. Members may submit additional information for the record within that time if they would like. The HELP Committee will meet again on Tuesday, October 17th to continue our hearings on examining the costs of prescription drugs. So thank you all for being here today. The committee stands adjourned. No one gave me a gavel. There we go. <laughs>